Hey everybody, welcome back to another Pastors Post. I'm Jeff, and today I want to do something a little different. It's the Christmas season. You might be looking for a book to read uh, while the kids are home for Christmas break. You probably want to spend time with your kids, but maybe you're also someone who just likes to get away a little bit and read some books. And I have one I really want to recommend it to you. It's called Counterfeit Kingdom, and it is by Holly Pivick and Douglas. I'm going to mess up his last name. Gavit, Givet, Givet, whatever. Holly Pivik is the main author. I'm going to go with that. Uh, if you look for it on Amazon, and I'll have a link down below, uh, you can find it under Holly Pivik, Counterfeit Kingdom. Now, Holly's written some other books, and I haven't read all of her other books, okay? So I, by no means am I endorsing the author here. But with that said, I really, really, really appreciated this book. Now, it's not a big surprise. I'm a Pentecostal pastor. I definitely believe in the continuation of the gifts and things like that. I am not somebody who believes in modern day prophets and apostles and all the wackadoo stuff that comes from the hyper charismatics like Bethel and Kenneth Copeland and all of that stuff. Holly does a fantastic job talking about what's become known as the New Apostolic Reformation. Now, as I understand it, the New Apostolic Reformation is not really that new. It's been around for a long time. It's just a rebranding of the Word of Faith, which was the Prosperity Gospel, which was the Latter Rain Movement. and actually finds a lot of its roots all the way back into the Gnostics and the Mystics, uh, from who, who also had tried to influence the church way back in the 200s and 300s. In fact, against heresies by Arrhenius, who was the spiritual grandson through Polycarp of the Apostle John. I think I got that right. He wrote a book called Against Heresies. And some of the stuff he talks about in there is still going on in the church today and still trying to force its way in. And this time it's through the cloak of the New Apostolic Reformation. Now, one thing I don't like about this book, and it's literally the only thing I didn't like about it, it's not about the quality, the cover. I think the, qual the cover is perfect. It shows a Pied Piper who is using music to lure people astray, and that is what Bethel and Hillsong and Elevation. Does it not bother anyone else in this nation that three churches produce 95, 99% of their worship music that churches are singing these days? It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. Um, why? Why do they get such a monopoly on that? I mean, we don't even, we, we have more options when it comes to fast food than it does people who write worship music, it seems like. And Caleb, I'm looking at you. Knock it off. Stop playing these people. Stop giving them platforms. It's worse than whenever someone gives a platform to Joshua Harris. Stop with this stuff. Okay, but my one gripe, my one negative thing I got to say, if Polly Pivik ever gets a chance to watch this video or whatever, if I could just say this, please, please, the first chapter reads like a Bethel hit piece. Now, they have earned every bit of ire they get from people, every bit of criticism. Um, they recently released some videos doubling down on some of their heretical views, things like that, the kenosis heresy that, that Bill Johnson preaches and all that nonsense. So they deserve that. But when I recommend this book to other Pentecostal pastors and I say, please, please read this book. You are doing some of this stuff in your church. You're allowing some of this nonsense into your church. Please read this and understand why that's wrong, why it is dangerous, why we don't have modern day apostles and prophets. By the way, the Assemblies of God, who I'm ordained with, has a position paper rebuking that very thing. And yet in practice, we have pastors who will allow people come in to, to come in and teach and preach under the guise of being a modern modern day apostle and prophet. That is wrong. That is sowing discord. That's in direct violation of scripture. Romans 16 uh, verses 17 and 18 says we're not supposed to have anything to do. Uh, we're to mark and, and separate ourselves from those who cause division. That's causing division. And there are assembly of God pastors who do this very thing. They will preach the fivefold ministry. They'll preach, name it, claim it, word, word of faith nonsense. It's actually called positive attraction or law of attraction, uh, positive confession. I kind of get those mixed up sometimes. And, and the assembly is, is very staunchly against these things. But in practice, we have pastors who aren't. 
And it is not, 1 Corinthians 1.10, we should be preaching and teaching the same thing, saying the same thing, and yet we're not. And so it is to the assemblies of God's shame that we need books like this, I think. And I, again, I would really recommend this. But the first chapter, if you are someone who's hypersensitive about all that stuff, I recommended this to a friend of mine. He listened to the audiobook sample and he said, all they do is throw stones. I don't want to hear this. Look, it's not throwing stones. Okay. I understood why he said that. And I said, just get past the first chapter. She explains things. She, she explains why she's so singling them out and all of that stuff. But it, it's not slander and it's not gossip and it's not throwing rocks. It's calling out sin for what it is. And that is you read every epistle in the New Testament with the exception of Philemon, and even then there can be a case made, every epistle calls out some false teacher or some false teaching that was creeping its way into the church, or at least tries to fortify the, the church's faith against some of those things that were trying to come in. So I don't think this is wrong. I don't think this book is heretical. I, it is not wrong to call out false teachers. In fact, if someone wanted to take some of my sermons and watch them and say, well, see, you said this, I think you're a false teacher. Okay, let's let's talk about that. You know, I'm open for debate and discussion. I'm open for healthy discussion. Um, take it, Don't take it out of context, you know, uh, be fair. And I think Holly is very fair in her writing. Um, I, I think she uses things in the context in which they were originally spoken. And in fact, whenever you go and you watch some of these quote unquote heresy hunters. I don't think that's really what they are, but that's what a lot of people call them. And there are some who probably do go that to that length, but like a Chris Roseboro or um, Elisa Childers, I don't call them heresy hunters at all, but they are calling out heresy. And if that makes you a heresy hunter, sure, sign me up for that. But the fact is uh, when these things are infiltrating our church, guys, this is the pastor's post. A pastor is a shepherd. And if you want to keep wolves out of your church, some of you guys, the wolves are already in there and you need, you need, you need books like this. You need to study and you need to understand that they are creeping into the flock. And with that said, I want to say this. One of the spiritual gifts mentioned in first Corinthians 12 is the gift of discernment of spirits. There is such a lacking of discernment overall in the church. Now in the world, you can have uh, discernment, Right. But discerning the spirits, the spirits behind some of these things, it is so lacking. I told a friend of mine once that it's like we couldn't get a nickel's worth of discernment in some of these churches. And when I say a nickel's worth, I don't mean five cents. I mean enough water to fill a nickel. It's that bad in some of these places. So I would challenge you, please check this book out. If you don't want to pay money for it, go to a library and rent it. It's only about 15 bucks. Please, I'm, I, if you are a Pentecostal pastor at all, I would beg you, please read this book. Please, I would challenge you to. It is it is so good. And there's so much good information in there. As And I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to go any deeper than what I already have. I, I, again, the first chapter is a little rough if you're very sensitive about these things. But you need to understand, finish the book, hear the arguments, and and go from there. So with that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Pick up the book, Holly Pivot, Counterfeit Kingdom, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.